Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. And you mm. can you can teach yourself to respond differently because you now have the emotional bandwidth to, to take it on. Um, and, and uh, process it and as i mentioned like that that like that weird sense of calm and seeing the world in hd and i'm like okay well what, this is the problem that i'm facing let's let's deal with it let's break it down um and fix it because for me this is a, i is a, i it came from when i looked at my son like i saw you know i got my diagnoses and i understood myself and i looked down at him and as he is a carbon copy of me, I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of that in you, bud. I don't want you to, ha you know, very similar to Kratos. I don't want you to have the life that I had. I don't want you to get into your thirties and realize that like every work problem you've ever had, every, you know, like social, every clash, every, everything that you faced, Hey, spoilers, it's been you all along. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's very easy to go, ah, it's everyone else, but like, no, no, it's you. And it's very hard to look at yourself and go, you have been the problem and it's a problem that you didn't know existed or you didn't know the answer for. And then in that moment, I went, you're the problem, but you have the answer. So when I looked at him, I said, I do not want you to have that same experience. That's make you know, I said, be better. I want to ensure that I can't change my past, but I can ensure that his future is going to be better. And then by doing so, like, you know, we got him medicated and he started to succeed and do all these other things. And then a lot of ASD traits started popping up. I'm like, well, you are a carbon copy of me. Shit. So then we've gone down that path and turns out bang on. Cause like similar to him now with all my, you know, the therapies and the medication and the, it, you know, those ADHD traits have started to like suppress themselves or be manageable. But now on the other side, it's like, Hey, he's all these things that also make sense, but were clearly hidden by the more overpowering ADHD. Like neurodevelopment is, is an insane thing. So yeah, like that was kind of it. When I looked in, I was like, this is, this is not what I should be. And then, yeah, when you have that clarity moment, you look around and I'm, pardon me, I'm seeing that impact around me. Yeah. And, and you know, like I'm, I'm a good person at heart and I, I never, ever want to hurt anyone, especially those I care for the most. So yeah, that was that moment when I, when I realized that, that, that I was hurting those around me, I was like, I can't do that anymore. I got to be better. Yeah, and it sounds like you you are better. How, how how has life then travelled on since moving away and seeing the light and you walking deeper into it? Light um, being alive, not you know passing away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because like you know, you know, you touched upon you know, um, like suicidal ideation, etc., and stuff like that's something that I've always dealt with. And um, Have you know, you ever want, thought about it? Oh, absolutely. I think about it all the time, but like. It, like for me, like it's thinking about it, and then the next step are two different, very, very two different, very things. Yeah, yeah, right. That, like that was where I was at too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'm getting close. Like, this is not good. Mm. I got to mm. run away from this. Um, mm. You know, and it's just it's there is something within our brains which sucks because there are no other animal on this planet actively thinks about suicide. It's just this damn consciousness that we have. It's like awesome because we develop tools and like iPhones and stuff, but then at the same time, we're like you should probably kill yourself. And it's like it's not an awesome thing to have. <laughs> So like be able to get on top of that is really, really cool. But But maybe maybe if we didn't have society have we had it and we still have it like the wild animals, maybe we wouldn't even think about it, right? Maybe well, we still lived in the trees and we didn't have the anxiety of, you know, tribes crossing tribes and we had our own tribes and we yeah. had no issues and we had nothing to fight for in, apart from finding food and protecting ourselves from the wild. Maybe we wouldn't have those ideas of killing ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Right? And and then by extension, like I think I only was able I was only my brain got to a point where it couldn't handle the world anymore, right? Like mm. whether it be because of my, my neurodiversity and like, you know, because I thought about that too. I'm like, how come no one knew in like 2002 that this was, you know, if I am a textbook definition ADHD kid, why did no one know then? But they know now. And then I'm like, well, the world has so drastically changed. 
Like we are in a, an attention and stimulus economy. No matter what we do, that's what they fight for. And, you know, my brain loves that shit. And suddenly, you know, bombardment of, of various things. What used to be my coping level is so different. And then hence got to a point. So yeah, in terms of, to back to your previous point was, you know, sort of what, what allowed me to see, to see that light and keep going. And, and it was, yeah, a lot of it was, um, yeah, just, it's, it's interesting because it's something I was thinking about lately as well. Like there's, n when it comes to therapy and, and, a, and a self healing journey, you, there's never a moment where you go, ha, here it is. If I do this thing, I'm going to be good. Doesn't happen. It wasn't until semi recently where I've like, huh, I haven't like my depression hasn't messed with me in a while. Huh. Interesting. And then I thought, and I'm like, shit, when was the last time that like I had a really shit run? I'm like, can be thinking about that, man. Get I don't know. Yeah, do you no, 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 it was good. It was like the ref <laughs> because like reflection yeah the way my brain works out it, it, it gets punched with emotional and the second the emotional dissipates logic kicks in so yeah. i was like huh why haven't i felt shitty in a while and i look <laughs> at all the things in my life and i'm like huh that's what the, you know, the guilt the shame all these things that would haunt me and kill me they're not the loudest noise in the room anymore and i can't mm. tell you when it happened but it happened all i can say is you know the things that i did was you know, um, therapy is incredible. Um, self-understanding is huge and being, you know, willing to look in that mirror and look within yourself and like genuinely reflect. And I think one of the biggest hurdles that most people have when they do therapy or any sort of healing is it's very easy to look into yourself and find the things you don't like about yourself but the step after that, like you can easily look in and go, Ooh, I hate that I do that. Ignore it. But the next step is what do I do now? Like, it's very hard to look in and go, I hate myself. Let's fix it. You know? So yeah, it's the light, like I, shit's real, real good. Now, like, as I said, my, my son and I, uh, you know, I, I've become the father I, that I, that I wanted to be. Um, you know, my, my ex-wife and I are, are more friendly and amicable than we, than we ever have been. Um, you know, like I have a new partner now and we're just about to move into, into a, our house together. Um, yeah, look at that little face. What a dude. It's a great picture. Ah, uh, I, mean, I, like, I chose it to go in the big one. Yeah. No, to, see, that's, yeah, I'll, I'll tell the story about that picture as well. Um, but yeah, so, you know, so like you've know, got a, a, a lovely partner and, you know, my son adores her, which is brilliant. And like her and my ex-wife get along and like, you know, life to use a Simpsons expression, you know, everything's coming up Millhouse. Like it's, everything is doing well for like ever. Yeah. And that's amazing. And like, you know, what I love about that, that photo as well, um, cause one of the things I failed to just do in general is take things as they are. You know, I was always someone that wanted more, but not because like I was just desperate. It was just like, I, I, I'm missing something more will fill it. So I, you know, I threw myself into content, whatever, whatever, a thousand, a thousand years. Um, and the, the, the challenge of, of my, my brain, especially with ADHD is that things either come unimaginably easy or they are unbearably hard. There is no in the middle. So all the things that I do, like, you know, I said my job, my subtle, I'm like, these it's so easy for me. Therefore, they are not of value. And it's like, no, they are of value. You just happen to be really easy at that. Like this happened to become easy for you. So like take that and own it and run with it. And that, yeah, for, as because of that, I failed to like be in the moment and enjoy something for what it is. So that photo as an example, um, so the nature of what I do is I'm very lucky that I do get access to games noticeably earlier than they come out. So my son is a massive Spider-Man fan. And coincidentally, um, when he was, he was staying with me um, and it was about a month before the game came, the game came out and the review code came in my inbox. Um, you know, we've been playing Spider-Man literally the day before. So like, I, you know, he wakes up and I'm like, Hey bud, what do you want to do today? He's like, I don't know. 
I'm like, do you want to play Spider-Man? He's like, daddy, we always play Spider-Man. I said, what about Spider-Man 2? Because like, you know, he's watched enough YouTube and stuff because he's been watching, you know, tease videos and he's like, uh, he goes, but that's not out yet. I'm like, yeah, for everybody else. Do you want to play it? So, you know, we, we set up in this room, we got him, you know, his seat and my seat, we loaded the game up and we recorded uh, ourselves playing the first hour. And it was lovely. It was a great bonding experience. And like, because one of, you know, kids, are, you know, the idea is that, you know, kids shouldn't have games. Like it's my, it's my, it's my thing. It's what I love most in this world apart from my son. So like, I can never, t I can never like hide games from him. But instead, no. like we use no, games. definitely can Yeah, no. So we use games differently, right? So they're not just consumable. Like, let's think about it. Let's ponder on it. So, you know, when we're playing this, this, you know, one of the first people in the world to play Spider-Man 2, and he's thinking about the game from a critical standpoint. You know, he's noticing that the music in the, like, this is all him. And this is on video, by the way. It's on YouTube. You're checking it. It's adorable. Um, <laughs> you know, he realized, he goes, hey, because, you know, Spider-Man 2 is all about Miles Morales and Peter Parker coming together to working together in the same game. And, he, and the first thing my son noticed, he goes, the music, it's, it's both of their theme musics combined. And I'm like, dear God, it is, you know? And then on top of that, like I bought him that controller, like the Spider-Man specific controller. And I had it stashed in a cupboard because it came out way before the game. So when we're doing this video, before we even started playing, I go, Hey bud, like we're going to play this. We need to do something special. He goes, when it's like uh, watching his face as he saw this. So that's his controller and he, he took it home with him. And, you know, we got this lovely moment of like him just, of his entire world just being blown away um, and just having a huge like shared moment, you know, like it's, it's, it's for him, the way I imagine him seeing it, he sees his dad who just cares and loves what he loves and allows us to, to share these little moments together. And he goes, my daddy did something special. And the fun part was, cause the game came out so early. Like I had to explain to him what an NDA was. Um, and he's like six. So I was like, uh, you can't tell anyone about this. He goes, okay, cool. And this was school holidays at the time. Um, and then he went to school and he goes, uh, oh no, sorry. It was just, it was the weekend. He was in regular school. And he went back to school. I'm like, Hey buddy, did you tell anyone you played Spider-Man on the weekend? So no, I didn't tell anyone, but I did write about it. I'm like, oh dear God. But it was essentially him and his little reflection of the weekend. Just saying I played Spider-Man with my dad. Um, no one's going to pick up on that. Don't worry. No, 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 no one's going to like, unless anyone submits his, <laughs> his book report to, you know, PlayStation Australia. Um, <laughs> well, it is going to go out to the world now though. <laughs> I work with them already. They're fine. Um, they even sent us a lovely, beautiful package and they said, you know, to Ryan and James, you know, thank you Aww. for, you know, so he got his cool backpack and, you know, comic yeah. and a bunch of other stuff it was really cool. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So like, you know, for him, that's, that's what he gets to see. And it's those special moments and, um, you know, he play, I think he finished that game like 20 times. Like he would just run it because, you know, and and he would call me and tell me that about the suits and like together we platinumed it. So we got all the achievements you could. We 100% of the game together, um, you know, and like I, that's such a special moment for me because, you mm. know, back in the day, like, the, just you know, just go past that because there was something else. But I was like, no, no, I'm going to sit and be present. And I know that, you know, when I'm older and like my time is ending, I know he'll look back and go, oh, these are some of those pivotal moments I have with my dad. Like even yeah. right now, he's playing God of War Ragnarok just because I love it. So he'll like okay. the other day, you know, he caught, he, we were in the car and he was talking to me about God of War and I started explaining some of the points. And I was like, oh, no, don't worry about it. I can stop. And he's like, no, 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 no. So I then got to tell him about like the, you know, why Thor Ragnarok, sorry, my apologies, why God of War Ragnarok is amazing. And it's a story about holding on and letting go because at the end of that first game, you know, they've become this incredible father-son combo. And then in the game, it's, you know, some time has passed and he's older and he's now ready to go on his own journey. So then it's like, you know, he Kratos has worked so so hard to get Atreus back and close, and now we has to let go of him again. But knowing, you know, but then dealing with, you know, the letting go is different here. It's not because you failed; it's because you did a good job, you know. Mm. And um, yeah, and I, I guess it's and then by extension, spoilers the end of that game. Like one of the things that the, that the throughput as as Kratos was a god, 
you know, the, the idea is because he did these horrible things, you know, there was, you know, um, Odin was like, you know, you may be a god, but you'll never be a god. You'll never be loved like a god, you know, respected like a god. Um, but then, you know, Ragnarok happens, which is the end of all things, and he prevents it from happening and he saves everyone. And um, and there's these beautiful, like, wooden boards. I forget what they're called. Um, so, and what they do is it's what the giants use to tell the future. So they kind of have these amazing paintings. Um and the, one of the final moments of the game is, you know, he sees, he opens this one side of it and it shows Atreus's journey, like everything that they have done from the beginning of that first game to now, and then shows that he's going off to do his own thing. So he knows that this was how it's meant to happen. But then he realizes that there's a second side to this big wooden thing. He goes around and he opens it and he sees statues of him and people telling the story of Kratos and how he saved everyone. And, you know, it's this powerful moment of everything that you have been through, all the shit, all the pain, it has all been for something. And it's, it's now it's, you know, he looks over and, you know, he see like, this is a, a character that's stoic as all shit. And then, you know, like he has a moment of break, um, you know, and him and his son embrace and, you know, he, Atreus goes off on his journey and like, it's, I cried for the last like 20 minutes of that, of that game. Just like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm glad, like, you know, I, you know, because I played that one early as well. So I'm glad there was no one around me because I couldn't, you know, play it with anyone or show anyone. And I'm just like, God, like deep crying and this huge powerful moment because like you know that game came out in 2018 sorry god of War came out in 2018 this one came out in 2022 23 you know so it's weirdly like my journey of self-improvement aligned with the game so to have that moment to be like hey man you done it it wasn't all for nothing every little step came to this so, yeah, so, like, you know, I look at that photo and I, I know that he, you know, behind me I've got, like, an abundance of God of War memorabilia, like, in my, it's, it's, it's just, because to me that's my son and I. Um, mm. Yeah, and I get to look at that little picture and see the absolute joy in his face. Because one of the things that I've always, I've always hated the idea of being a bad father. I don't know why. It just sits in, in, in the back of my head. I, I um, know why, because you're human. Yeah, but you know, you know, there I've, are there are things that I that I get to do, and when I see, I can see it in him, like in that picture. That is a that is a that is a boy that is fucking proud and loves his dad, and not just because absolutely. not just because of the cool things in that moment, but because of 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 the work and the things that come with it. Like you know, if I'm at a wrestling show and I'm ringing out, I'm standing in the middle of the ring, and what do I see? My boy in the crowd, biggest grin on his face. Like, that's my dad. Um, and that's what it's all for. And, you know, I said at the start, like, he is everything. And my entire journey of betterment and even all the things that I do, whether it be games, working in wrestling, all those things do, like, they, they're all part of me and they what fill my cup and keep me well. And the center point of that is if I do these things to keep me well, so I can be there for him. So, you know, it seems really arbitrary. It seems like a weird way to make excuses for doing things. But, you know, like yeah. if I go to a wrestling show, I make sure to come, he comes with me if he wants to, you know, because he's part of it. He is he's as important to, to all of this uh, as all the things that I do. So like, yeah, I'm like, cool. I'm, I'm well, you know, I'm doing this or my weekend. You know, there have been times where I'm like, I'm not doing that show because I have my son. That's not happening. You well, know, because like, that you know and most people can say that as that you know, as parents like you know yes my son you know my child is my everything but like if i didn't have him i i don't know how the last couple of years would have been i don't think they would have happened yeah. because yeah. like no no lie like i i never saw myself turning 30 at all ever um but you know 26 27 i suddenly had a reason to be past 30 and then i hit 30 and then i yeah, and then now I, I have a reason to be forty. 
Yeah, absolutely. A good a good way of looking at it. And, and be, before you had him as well, you, you, you never probably saw him in your future no. because of what you'd gone through. Well, you know, you, you knew that you'd had what you had done mm-hmm. to yourself when you were three. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, you are. No, I just spoke it's... at you for like 20 no, minutes. No, it's beautiful. I sank right into it, uh, Ryan. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I sank right, right into it. And... And I think it's beautiful, and I think you articulate yourself so well. And I think if anyone's listened to it, they can take so much from it, whether it's being present, whether it's reflecting on oneself, whether it's the art of connection mm. at a deep, deep level, right? That's that's what you've pretty much there. My three main things that I took from that from that because Because even on top of that, right, like it, it's – it's you, you – I think when it comes to self healing and a, and a self journey, people have this expectation of what it should be or how it should go, or the sources at which you find that inspiration, mm. right? Like, as I said, I found mine in a video game. I found my purpose in wrestling. Like, you know, I'm I'm an old emo kid, right? Like, clearly, because I'm just a bunch of, of motion. So, like for me, I find per you know songs and music that can speak lyrically more than I ever could, even though I'm weirdly articulate. But even mm. an example is, did, did you see the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once? Uh, no. Oh, dear God, what an absolutely incredible movie. So came out a couple of years ago, one best picture, it's beautiful. Um, it's one of those you know, one of those bits of media that I watched that and I went, I, that movie understands me in a way that I was not ready for. Because of the way it talks about mental health and suicidal ideation and you know, overcoming that. And like, it's, it's incredible, right? Like, so I would highly recommend, I think it's a movie's incredible, but like even, you know, finding, you know, we, we presume that like we look for the good things in the world, but like I said, being an old emo kid, like finding things that are like the bad in the world, the things that are pain, but connecting with it, you know, like, I, my favorite genre of music is pop punk, right? Because pop punk is like, it's bubble gum, it's chewy, it's like junk food. But lyrically, they're depressing as shit. And because it, it's what it is, it's like, that's what I love about it. So, like, you know, during 2020, like Machine Gun Kelly's Tickets to My Downfall just nailed it. Like, it's this, you know, friendly 2000s pop punk exterior, very blink 182. But lyrically, it's dark, depressing, and, you know, talking about the challenges that, just come with being in someone's head and in even by extension, and I'm just like name dropping now. Another one would be bring me the horizons, um, post-human survival horror. So this was a, a, an album that was made entirely during the pandemic and each individual person was never in the same room. Um, and in a time where people were trying to make music or content that was like, Hey, it's not all bad. Like it was really dismissive. They made an EP that was just like, everything is fucked. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.